What's good? Just wanted to go over my current uh, off-duty EDC medical setup. Um, if I'm wearing pants that have back pockets, which is the majority of the time, this is what's on me. This has been about a decade in the making, and I think I've finally got it down to uh, relative perfection. Um, so this is the Crow Medical Slim Bleeder Kit, and uh, it's the small size. I also carry an NCD next to it in the back pocket, sidecar style, and a full-size TQ, usually in a front pocket. Uh, first off, I'll talk about why I like this setup. Uh, big being uh, scalability. So this is key because this kit allows me to keep my primary TQ separate and placed optimally in different spots depending on what pants I'm wearing. But most importantly, this kit has nothing against TSA or other regs. Uh, in it. So if I'm going somewhere where I know I'm going to get patted down, I can leave my gun, knife, and needle in the car and then continue to carry this kit the same way. Um, also, compactness, comfort, and organization. So this kit's obviously super compact. Uh, Crow, like everything they do is pretty awesome. Um, and they make some very unique items, like really nothing on the market kind of touches them. And it really comes down to the construction of the pouch. Like, uh, this kit is lightweight and slim and actually pretty waterproof, but it's also oddly rigid and organiz or organizable for its size. So, like, this is no, no fatter than a standard wallet, um, which really sets it apart from something like the Live the Creed pocket kit that's pretty uh, popular. I got that that kit from my, uh, my dad, and he won't carry it because it really is too thick for a back pocket. Uh, this crow pouch is not because it kind of gets around that by making it wider instead of uh, less wide where the Live the Creed kit is. Uh, also, I don't like the idea of wearing something on my ankle, so that was out of the question for me. Um, so what I used to do was I used to carry these Focus Research kits that I was making with some 14 gauge needles at different times. And that was after I put this stuff in like these just, you know, frozen Ziploc bags, but they kept deteriorating on me. So I went to date these. Um, they're great, especially if on this one is a micro perforation. If that opens it, I've never tried that. I think it, I think it splays the kit open, which would be nice. Um, but the crow pouch is just ends up being easier to access. So my current contents inside the kit is uh, currently a SWAT tourniquet. Um, it's a multi-purpose device. It gives me a lot of capabilities in a small package. I like capabilities. Uh, you know, I can use it as a pressure dressing. I can wrap an ankle, sling and swath and I can use it as a backup tourniquet. They're not uh, Committee on Tactical Combat Casualty Care approved, but they will occlude arterial flow. Until recently, I staged the SWAT T in, in there, out of the package, more or less like that, but, you know, folded up. Um, but I found out that the, the zippers were cutting the, on the crow pouch, were cutting the edges of the tourniquet whenever I opened the kit, and that's just not something I was, I was willing to chance anymore. So I switched to the uh, just carrying the SWAT T in, in the package. Uh, then I also have a Cellox Rapid rib Ribbon, this red thing right there. So obviously that's, that's just uh, packing material for junctional wounds, which is something that's pretty overshadowed by tourniquets, but it's really just as important. Um, I went with Cellox because this particular kit is most likely going to be used on civilians and a large amount of the civilian population over 40 are on blood thinners. So Cellox works outside the body's natural clotting cascade, and I personally think it's a better option for, their, for a kit like this for that reason. But I keep combat gauze in most of my other kits. Um, gloves. So I've got a few pairs here. Um, multiple pairs of gloves. I keep a couple pairs of uh, mediums and also a pair of size large gloves. Um, the Wilderness Medical Training Center calls these trauma gloves in their kits for the uh, the orange ones, the size large ones. Um, and I, I really agree with this nomenclature. 
So my glove size is medium, and I like that size for when I'm rendering general aid, but there is something to be said for having thicker gloves and a larger size to be able to put on quickly and better protect yourself from the larger amounts of fluids associated with uh, when you're doing your march assessment and also for cardiac arrest. Note that both of these gloves are light colors, like a nice lavender and a Halloween orange, so I can see blood. Also, having multiple pairs of gloves is good so that you can better enlist the help of bystanders and CPR, etc. Behind it, the Solux pad, I have a layered old face shield, just a CPR face shield. Um, so you don't need this for single rescue or CPR, as you should be, be doing uh, just continuous chest compressions for that. But I keep this for multiple rescue or CPR, but more importantly for respiratory arrest and distress. If someone's not breathing, breathe for them. I actually made an off-duty save on the highway with just a mask. A uh, dude crashed into a barrier in front of me, pull up, he's uh, slumped over the wheel, unresponsive and not breathing, so I pull him out, give him two rescue breaths, and he woke up. Seems to kind of be uh, an apparent overdose, and sometimes uh, just rescue breath is all that's needed. Uh, in the very rear of the pouch, I also have uh, a couple beacon chest seals way back there vented chest seals. Um, in mass shootings, chest wounds are more common than they are among wounded soldiers and cops because civilians don't wear body armor, so you can never have enough chest seals on you, especially when in public. Um, on the same note, I keep one or two 2x2 uh, two two tegonerms in there. These are handy for when someone has a small wound, and unlike band-aids, these are pretty good to go in every anatomic location. Um, But I also keep them in here because small diameter bullet wounds are super common in the hood. Uh, 22 caliber pistols are like the most common ghetto weapon in my area, and the Tegaderm represents a very easy option to cover a small second entrance wound if I already blew through my chest seals on an entrance and an exit. Uh, it sounds super specific, but I've been there, so that's why. I keep some uh, flat tape from Focus Research in there. They call it frog tape. It's basically just a report that's flat folded. Uh, to improvise more chest seals and uh, just for convenience. I also have about four safety pins in here for convenience. Uh, they can also be used to clip someone's shirt arm to the body of their shirt so you can make a sling or you can also probe for a splinter. If I'm really asked out and only have this kit in some dire circumstance where I'm sitting on a patient, I can utilize a safety pin to prevent the tongue from blocking the airway or even close a wound. But both of those things are not really fully accepted, and this kit is not what I'd be carrying in those situations, as I'd have an aid bag, but expect the unexpected. I keep a 3.5-inch uh, baby hemostat in here. Uh, it, it's come in handy for some random things, but I keep it in here for mesenteric clamping in case of abdominal evisceration, mainly. Um, also, right here is the uh, the tub, the hub off of a 3.0 endotracheal tube. Uh, as an ALS provider, um, when paired with the ARS needle, I can perform an eelcrike and then ventilate through the hub of the ET tube after I connect it to the catheter. Uh, due to oppressive depressor, Special Forces Medic did a good video on this. I'll link that below. Uh, lastly in the kit, this, these blue things right here, um, I have two hero wipes for decon. You're definitely going to want to clean yourself up after rendering aid, and decon is always overlooked. They come in handy for regular day-to-day -day needs too, like when the sketchy public bathroom doesn't have soap. I found these to be the best after trying Purell wipes and then Vironex wipes for a while. Both of those dry out after only a little while in the kits, and uh, these don't due to the more rugged packaging. So, not in the kit, as I mentioned earlier, but I... I Usually, gen generally carry a Gen 4 soft T-wide tourniquet from TACMAD Solutions. This is my uh, EDC TQ due to how compact and flat it is. Yes, it's blue, not because it's for training, but because I like blue. America. Um, also, a 10-gauge ARS needle. There's a lot of well-regarded literature out there that suggests that 10-gauge is superior to 14-gauge uh, for adult needle thoracentesis as well as pediatric needle crike. And uh, 
a 10 gauge seems to be how the Katsi is going as well. Also, just want to touch on uh, non-medical items that I carry in my EDC that kind of pull double medical duty. So they're not medical items per se, but they, they have a medical role. So first off, I carry a, a Fisher Space Pen, which can, I can use to write the tourniquet time, as well as vitals on my gloves for responding uh, EMS. I also carry a Surefire flashlight, which can light up a scene or also do a quick pupil check for TBI. Uh, my phone can be a help during medical aid incident as well, obviously. And I have 911 on a one-click button accessible from my lock screen and an ICE app, which is a pretty good idea, in my opinion. Lastly, my knife can be used as a patient access tool to cut clothing, especially if I'm carrying my Benchmade triage, which is my go-to. Uh, lastly, I wanted to make it clear this is an everyday carry kit. While this represents a lot of capabilities for its diminutive size, uh, it's supplemented by very, very quick ALS 911 response, and I'm never far from my aid bag. Uh, thought I'd just do this quick overview. Remember, get trained, treat people right, stay free, peace.